Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Mackenzie Warren Kay joins us. She's an attorney and vice president of government affairs from McDonald Carano. Here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Hit the open road with a truckload of cash free play in one of three luxury travel trailers during the $250,000 Travel Time giveaways. Thousands in weekly giveaways plus $7,500 in grand prizes guaranteed. And a new travel trailer or $35,000. Now at the Carson Valley Inn. Welcome to the Winnemucca Big R. Hi, I'm John Walker. Welcome to Big R Love Lock. Hi, I'm Rich Martin. Welcome to Fallon Big R. My name is Braden. Welcome to Big R Friendly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Welcome to Big R Sparks. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Mackenzie Warren Kay, attorney and vice president of government affairs at McDonald Carano and relatively new mom. Congratulations. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for that. You are very welcome. Um, always great to see you. And I wanted to just cover a whole bunch of races. So first of all, your thoughts on where we are in Nevada uh, with the Biden-Trump race and where JFK Jr. comes into all of this? I still say JFK who. I, I'm just not seeing it here in Nevada. And I really am predicting, Sam, low turnout. I think neither Trump um, or the president are um, invigorating and exciting folks. A lot can happen between now and, and November. But I think what I'm consistently seeing is a shrugging of the shoulders and not not feeling completely confident with either of the choices. I will say in recent weeks, the president has certainly added um, a punchiness to his campaigning. He's definitely catering to um, younger voters, which which absolutely makes sense, given the sharp criticism that we know is coming from um, the younger generation in in the response and what's happening in Israel and, and Gaza right now. But you know, you see the president on late night television um, at the correspondence dinner a few weeks ago. He's taking jabs, and then of course you have um, former President Trump who is uh, addressing the public every morning before his trial, using that as as his as his podium and and his place. Um, he he's hamstringed right now campaigning, and I think that's probably a worry for the Trump campaign. But overall, in Nevada, I don't see overwhelming excitement for, for either. And that's what makes our jobs really fun, right, as, as we wait. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think for the former president, um, his opportunity to have these press conferences every day is a billion dollars with the free publicity that he couldn't pay for if he tried. That's fair. But, but to me, I think um, former President Trump is a master at, at finding the microphone wherever it is. His Twitter or X is often, you know, 
where he is spouting out and, and that gets replayed, of course, um, late night television with, you know, his his bestie, um, Jimmy Kimmel, just joking there. Um, oh. So I, I think he's a master, right? He's a master at using media. That really was his first foray into this world of politics. And he knows how to use um, television and social media, um, perhaps better than than any modern day politician. Oh, absolutely. Um, and the marijuana issue for President Biden that just came out yesterday, um, that's going to appeal to younger uh, voters, one presumes. But um, I, I was uh, texting with uh, somebody who will be on the show in a couple of weeks, who is uh, the king of marijuana in Nevada. Ah. And uh, I, I was suggesting that not just young voters, but older voters as well, uh, might be uh, happy to know that the price of marijuana may drop significantly um, if taxes come down. So, you know, Tick is the godfather. I, I won't I won't step on Chair Segar Bloom's uh, area of expertise, but I think there's just a real general apathy when, when it comes to Washington. I think for so long we've heard that the federal government is going to move and act on, on marijuana, certainly. Um, we'll believe it when, when we see it. I think, you know, Nevada has been a leader um, looking to decriminalize cannabis and, and help infuse and, and, and lift the industry. But, but really the battle here in Nevada is the illicit market and just the, the mere fact that uh, the, the legal and safe operators can't compete with, with the black market and the illicit market. Um, I'm hopeful, but, but to me, it almost feels like, well, we'll believe it when we see it. And is it too little, too late? Yeah, because some, some of the, uh, the dispensaries, um, the most popular ones that are near the strip, seem to me to be catering 99% towards the tourist base and not really to the local population. But if this all passes, Mary Lau on this program several years ago said that uh, when it becomes federally legal, that the best consumption lounges will be in the casinos right opposite the buffet. There will be $100 a plate. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. And, and you know, bringing the consumption lounges up is, is another interesting point. I think this this is the, the missing ingredient in the cannabis market. It's legal, yet there's no legal place to, to safely consume. But the million dollar question is, will the public seek out something like a lounge or are they more comfortable just consuming in their living room? Does it become a novelty experience? Been there, done that, checked it off my list? Or is it something where these dispensaries that also have lounges can really um, invigorate and, and excite a, a new attraction to Las Vegas? They're, they're still in their infancy, but it's something that, you know, those in the industry are, are, are definitely watching and remain hopeful. And then like you say, encroach on those setback requirements if it's legalized federally to finally be opening alongside the resort gaming corridor. Well, I was reading an article about a week or so ago about how many people are choosing uh, not to consume alcohol or cut way back on alcohol. And yet we know, and this was certainly true, uh, true during COVID, um, that people are still going to want to meet socially. They don't just want to be at their house. Um, they don't want to necessarily be with their family. They want to be out and about. So I think that there's potential for that. But, but going back to your earlier point, so do you see potentially something like a 2014 repeat where the Republicans could end up having an advantage um, because if it's a low turnout, um, they could do very well as they did back then? I'm not predicting um, 2014 and, and, and the reason why is because Democrats in Nevada are just so good at getting out the vote. The Democrat voter has long trusted voting early. They vote by mail. Um, and, and I think the Republicans have, have started to get on that bandwagon likely a, a little too late. And I think at the end of the day, Trump is, is too extreme for a, for a Nevada style Republican. And, and, you know, frankly, the abortion issue and women's access to health care um, just resonates um, with, with moms in the suburbs and those, those nonpartisans. And I, I foresee that as being too large of an obstacle to overcome for Trump. But, hey, it's, it's springtime and, and we are a ways away from, from fall, Sam. Yes. And, you know, it's interesting is that the Republicans are now, after all this time of saying, you know, vote on Election Day, uh, now being forced to realize that, hey, if you don't get early voting, you are losing out on a big chunk of the electorate. And that is not the smartest route to go down. So 
No, not especially in Nevada when we've been early voting um, for so long. It's so part of our democratic tradition here. I, I think it's hard to, to cut through that. What do you think, of, and I presume you've been following this, um, the uh, Postal Service wants to move uh, part of the delivery operation out of Reno into Sacramento. And the Secretary of State and a lot of other um, officials are very unhappy about this, including, of course, the congressional delegation, um, because this could delay uh, voting by mail. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? And, and what about you know, the perceived power of our senators, especially, um, to not be able to stop this? I, I think it's a very delicate issue. And, and I think more about delaying, what I think it does is it infuses um, uncertainty and it makes that, that pool of skeptics and um, even conspiracy theorists sound even louder because they're able to say, what's happening here? This is government doing something to, to tinker and to meddle in the election process. So much of the why gets lost in the noise and we're impacting access to democracy, which I think is a very delicate issue. And it's it's a it's a platform and, and pillar of the Democratic Party. And so I think it's going to be very interesting to see how, you know, a, a Senator Jackie Rosen or, or our um, congressional delegation can respond and react. Um, my guess is that they try to distance because it, it just gets complicated, Sam, and I, I'm not sure it does them any favors. I think they they are resonating on their talking points um, with women's you know, access to health care um, and the prescription drug price lens, which Senator Rosen is absolutely hammering. And it makes sense. We Everyone almost knows someone in their circle that, that relies on insulin um, or who has you know, prescription drug purchasing every month and being able to quantify that savings as she's doing in her ads, um, I think is really resonating. And it's, it's very fascinating. There are no negative attack ads. Where, where, are, where are her Republican contenders? I don't even think she needs to talk about them because it's, it's all about Jackie right now in Nevada, just as we saw with Senator CCM's campaign. I think she's doing a fantastic job. Um, what do you think about uh, Dr. Jeff Gunther, uh, the uh, dentist who is uh, uh, running against Sam Brown? Um, he's spending quite a bit of money already um, on the attack, and especially, I note, uh, in print uh, in rural Nevada. Um, do you think that there's a chance for an outsider to come in and play against Sam Brown, who has this national support that is tremendous? I, I think it's a valiant effort, and I do agree. I've seen some of the the, the Gunther ads. I think it's a little too late. I, I really see this as a as a foregone conclusion. Um, even the attack ads um, being put up by the PACs on on Sam Brown, just don't think the larger public and Nevadans even know who either of these these gentlemen are. It just sounds so skeptical. You know what? I, I come to politics from two different angles. One is political campaigning, but the other is the other side of my business, as you know, is an advertising agency. Sure. And we have spent so much time in politics saying, you're no good, no, you're no good, no, you're no good, you're no, you're no good, as against when you're advertising a product or service where you talk about you know, the benefits of your product. Um, it seems that you know, the, these campaigns don't understand that we need to like you to buy your product or buy you as a politician. Does that resonate with you? Absolutely. I think it's also difficult that in, you know, in the instance of, of Brown or Gunther, neither of these gentlemen have a voting record. There's nothing that they can share to say, this is what I've accomplished for you. So, so they're already at, at a disadvantage. I think with, you know, Senator Rosen's approach, she's, she's making it tangible. She is, she is painting herself as the middle of the road, you know, I'll, I'll work for you person. And that likability factor is, is so important. And the other, the other um, magical factor that we all know is the power of being female on the ballot. Um, females historically um, here have done tremendously well. We have a female majority legislature. Um, our, our judicial bench is overwhelmingly filled with female judges. And, and that is a, a trend that, that we've seen for, for quite some time. And I, I think it's, it's to her advantage because it, it, does, it does resonate. I think the other side of this is, and, and, and you kind of raised this, uh, which is that middle of the road seems to be a bigger and bigger chunk of the electorate. 
And, uh, it, you know, even though when you look at the record, Jackie Rosen has certainly voted with the president uh, a, lot, <laughs> a larger percent uh, than she has with Republicans, but that has been a constant theme of her campaign is that she is um, uh, willing to cross party lines. Um, do you think that at this point um, that that middle of the road chunk is going to be, you know, as effective rather than the extremes of both parties? I think it depends if they turn out. And, and it goes back to, to what I'm saying earlier. Those middle of the road, to me, feel the most uh, neutral, perhaps even apathetic toward either side. And so I think Senator Rosen is taking this approach to say, I, I'm, I'm not over here, but I'm not this guy either. I, I'm somewhere here. The, the question that, that you're getting at is what, is what does turnout look like? And can, can we get those center people to show up and I, I just don't see it right now. The economy is kind of chugging along, things are going okay. Um, you know, perhaps if we see some more extreme measures taken by um, some red states like the, you know, the Alabama IVF or what happened in Arizona, what we're seeing in Florida, if more of that activity is, is churning come November, maybe that excites those those moderate folks to come out and exercise their their voice. But when we look at, you know, the, the national and, and federal ticket, I just don't know if it's enough to get people to turn out. Therein lies, I think Democrats do the best at at turning the early vote and vote by mail. And that's why I think they, they have the edge, um, at, at least right now is what I see. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back more with Mackenzie Warren Kay after this timeout. Story County is leading Nevada. Home of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center, Google, Tesla, Panasonic, and other world-leading companies. Story County provides thousands of tech, advanced manufacturing, and logistics careers for Nevadans. We're diversifying and driving Nevada's economy and generating millions in tax revenue and billions in economic activity across Northern Nevada. Story County is leading Nevada's future. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V org Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Mackenzie Warren Kay. She's attorney and vice president of government affairs at McDonald Carano. Um, so it was interesting with redistricting. Uh, Dina Titus was not pleased with the fact that uh, her district uh, was moved away from being such a strong Democratic uh, uh, stronghold. Um, and those, those uh, voters were being pushed into uh, what had been more competitive areas. Um, but it seems like in this particular cycle, she is not really facing any problems. Dina Titus is bulletproof. Um, when, when Dina's ready to hang it up, she'll hang it up. She, she knows Nevada. She knows her constituents. Um, a very aggressive campaigner and, you know, has that relatability factor um, that I think is just her her superpower, and so I think Dina absolutely get, gets it done. Uh, Susie Lee uh, also seems to be in a stronger position in that swing district than one might have thought. 
I think so. I think this road looks e easier um, for Susie Lee. And and one of the things that I think Susie Lee is doing similar to, to a Jackie Rosen is, is appearing in the middle and, you know, recently put out a, um, a bill that would change the appraisal process and the federal lands process that is a snag and part of the delay in, in getting federal land released for development. Um, President Lombardo applauded, or I'm sorry, uh, Governor Lombardo. Uh, nice promotion. Applauded, <laughs> I just gave him a hell of a promotion. I'm <laughs> pleased to hear that. Um, applauded the Congresswoman for her policy and she doubled down and said, um, endorse this piece of legislation. And so he did. And, and the two of them issued a, a joint press release on this very important issue. Um, a, a, I wouldn't call it rare, but you know, it's it's more rare than common since of bipartisanship, understanding that the federal lands issue is major in Nevada. And when the governor looks at affordable housing, one of his his largest talking points, which is absolutely correct, is supply. It is all about supply. The more healthy and robust our housing supply, the more stable um, rents and home prices become. And we have a plethora, pl plethora of unused federal lands that need to get moving. So um, brilliant, brilliant by the Congresswoman. I think she's going to continue to find more opportunities to uh, show herself as as the pro-business Democrat that, that I think her, her reputation is. Um, and uh, let's take another quick break here and we'll come back more with Mackenzie Warren Kay after this timeout. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Mackenzie Warren Kay. She's an attorney and vice president of government affairs for McDonald Carano. Um, you were talking about President, I'm sorry, Governor Lombardo. And uh, <laughs> look what I started. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I'm sure he won't be uh, upset with that. Um, but uh, it's been interesting to see that once again, um, the state Republican Party is pushed off to the side and Governor Lombardo and his advisors are firmly in control of picking candidates and some very good candidates uh, to run in these races. How successful does it look to you um, in his campaign? It, the machine is impressive. They have certainly rolled up, rolled up their sleeves and, and been very aggressive at, at touting these candidates and, of course, targeting those seats that they view as flippable. I think, you know, a lot of us, uh, due to redistricting and some of the dynamics in the Senate, have sort of written that off, um, that a supermajority will, will be accomplished. They're currently one seat away right now. Um, and the Assembly is really where, where the focus is. And there are some, some swingy districts and very smartly have selected um, moderate, relatable candidates. Uh, you know, one of them, for example, a physician. She is solid on, on the abortion issue. And so um, I think it's effective. They've raised a ton of money. The pack that's been set up to infuse these campaigns is, is absolutely um, a war chest, no doubt. Um, it's going to come down to turnout. 
I, I, I hate to say it. And, you know, some of these folks are brand new. How well do they know the district? How well do they know the game? Um, especially those that are that are facing incumbents that have ran before, that understand um, the door knocking and, and the mailers. Um, does the sophistication and experience edge out, or is it just a matter of change? And and folks in Nevadans being able to cut through the noise and see the bigger picture of saying we need balance, split government works better. You know, I think in northern Nevada, um, it's always been a failing that uh, in sem assembly and senate races they have not used television. Um, they they've used you know mailers, uh, which are fine if anybody actually reads them, but. Um, even though you would really exceed the districts, um, television is still such an incredibly strong medium. Um, we've got about uh, less than a minute here, so I want to drop in on the mayor's race. Um, fascinating race at this point for the city of Las Vegas. And television, I mean, it, it's happening here. So we have Shelley Berkeley, who um, is a giant, right? And the name recognition there, I think, um, cannot be understated. You've got um, two sitting council members, Councilman Creer, who is really touting that Vegas born um, first black mayor of, of the city being an ambassador. And then you have a Victoria Seaman who is very aggressive. She rolls out, it seems like a new endorsement um, every day. I think strategically has picked off some issues at council to appeal um, to certain groups. Um, thus far, I know Shelly and Cedric are, are using uh, commercials and, and television to, to get this out. Um, it's, it's an exciting race. All three candidates bring such a different energy um, and perspective, but this is absolutely the talker in, in Southern Nevada um, here, I think in part because we've had a Goodman for so long. Um, but the fact that these are, are three um, very venerable, capable individuals, each of which would bring a different style and, and a different strength. Uh, to say the least, we are out of time. I wish I had more because there's a lot more I could add there. I thank you so much for doing this always. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we will see you uh, very soon. Sam, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Turn your clunker into a caddy during the Cadillac and Cash giveaways at Tamarack Casino. Weekly cash drawings including 5,000 cash and one top prize of $10,000. Win the grand prize of a Cadillac CT4 or 40000 in cash. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. You can catch us online 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can download the podcast wherever you like to get your podcast. We'll see you on the next broadcast.